It's hard not to fondly miss the time when the internet was a simpler place. While the early roots of social media had their own pockets of toxicity, I'm much more nostalgic for cringy, incongruously colored MySpace pages that blasted evanescence the moment you dared visit them than I'll ever be for Facebook's aggressive propaganda groups or TikTok's shameless attention-seeking. Today's social media feels like a place less for making valuable connections with others and more a place to try your hardest to disconnect from, even as its billionaire overlords addictive algorithms push you to watch just one more video of a cat playing the piano. Video Verse takes place in those simpler times of the internet, where passionate fans of the latest video games could fling to forums to share their art and chat about whatever was on their minds. Despite some swearing and other mature content making this not necessarily suitable for kids, Videoverse exudes a certain warmth that those like myself who grew up in the early 2000s will find nostalgic in all the right ways. Now, while speaking of places where passionate fans of the latest video games can go to talk about them, I'd like to briefly mention that access to our lovely I Dream of Indie Games Discord community is one of the cool perks you get if you're kind enough to support us on Patreon. Check out the link in the description below if you'd like to help us keep bringing you honest reviews free of the influence of gaming media's echo chambers. Now, back to Videoverse. You play as Emmett, a 15-year-old boy living in Germany whose main social outlet is the game's namesake, Videoverse. Videoverse is a social networking platform Emmett accesses through a shark gaming system, which looks pulled from an alternate reality where the Nintendo DS was a home console. And the Nintendo comparison is pretty apt, since the game is heavily inspired by Miiverse, as well as early internet forums and instant messaging apps. I never got into Miiverse myself, since I was pretty late to the Nintendo bandwagon, with my first console by them having been the Wii U. Yes, seriously, I'm one of the seven people who actually paid money for the Wii U and didn't even use it that much. But it doesn't really matter, because every time Emmett logged into Videoverse, I was quickly transported to a time in my life where I couldn't wait to say bye to my friends at school, go home, and log on to AOL Instant Messenger to chat with those same friends about god knows what late into the evening. While much of the game's plot covers Emmett's everyday activities on Videoverse, before long overarching stories, friendship drama, and love interests begin to carry through the chapters, creating some good plot hooks that kept me invested. Though it helps that Videoverse is a hell of a charming thing, with great, well-written characters throughout. Emmett is, for for lack of a better term, an enormous dork. He loves drawing his favorite character from feudal fantasy, even if he's not especially good at it. He constantly second guesses himself or over apologizes when chatting with girls, and excitedly drools over the new gaming system he's hoping to get as a Christmas present. Dorky Emmett is dorky me from 20 years ago, albeit a bit less cringy and almost certainly less gay. But Videoverse's attempts to make him and his friends interesting and relatable are fabulously successful at every turn. It helps that the game really looks the part of an early internet forum too. You'll spend most of the time in Videoverse's fairly simplistic interface, browsing through comments and pixelated fan art, and playing with different colored themes that you unlock by achieving meta goals like liking 100 comments or posting in various threads. Emmett will sometimes be shown in full comic book styled color as he uses Videoverse in the real world, or he'll be shown chatting with his friends on video with his expressions appropriately matching the tone of the conversation. All of the artwork here that's meant to be great is great, and adds tons of personality to the already charming proceedings. The soundtrack, whose composer also worked on Slay the Spire and Kind Words, echoes with chill synthetic thrums that match the gameplay well but do tend to blend together a bit over time. Overall though, the presentation here is exactly what you'd expect from such a nostalgic passion project and doesn't disappoint in the slightest. The gameplay of Videoverse is that of a visual novel with a bit more freedom. You'll be locked into certain events and conversations which have a few dialogue options to select from and ones that can majorly change the game's outcomes with key characters. Videoverse secretly keeps track of your choices using logic that's never especially clear and will lock out future choices if Emmett is deemed not to be compassionate enough or cocky enough to respond as such. But while none of the individual dialogue choices seemed like they'd be especially impactful, they can certainly have a butterfly effect, and in some cases be the difference between becoming best friends with someone on Videoverse or having them block you. Outside of messaging conversations with Emmett's friends, you'll explore various communities within Videoverse, like one dedicated to Emmett's favorite new game, Feudal Fantasy, made by the company CircleSoft. I'm sure you get the idea. I love that Videoverse's dialogue choices are impactful, though I will warn that the ability to affect the game's outcome is a double-edged sword, as I found my ending to be interesting but not particularly satisfying. While Videoverse is an immersive game that was pretty hard to put down in the just under four hours it took me to get through it, there were some minor issues. In a couple of chapters, I would finish a chat conversation or reply to a post only to find nothing new to really look at, and would aimlessly browse the same threads again for ten minutes or so until I mysteriously triggered 
trigger whatever conversation is supposed to happen next. It's hard to say whether these moments of downtime were intentional or not, but they were certainly a piece where Videoverse tended to get a bit boring and were thankfully brief enough to not harm the overall experience too much. And while the experience mostly seemed very polished, there are some noticeable spelling errors here and there, not just the intentional ones, and one time when I chose a dialogue option and the game acted like I had chosen a different one, but the bugs are pretty minor and should hopefully be patched out in due time. I do want to mention, however, that I wouldn't especially recommend playing Videoverse on the Steam Deck at the moment unless you're willing to do some troubleshooting. The game looks and runs great on it, but at least in my limited playtime, I found the controls to be agonizing. The game was clearly designed around mouse clicks rather than a controller, as is often unclear which button you're about to push or how to select or submit a particular message. Yet, for some reason, trying to use the right trackpad as a mouse doesn't show a mouse cursor on screen, making each click a bit of guesswork. I'm sure there's some way around these issues that somebody savvier than I will figure out, but just be aware the out-of-the-box experience on Steam Deck is a bit lacking. If you want or need to play with anything but a mouse and keyboard at the moment, you may want to wait a bit. Ultimately, Videoverse is something a lot of people are going to find very special. It's light on gameplay and can arguably drag at times, but full at heart and all the little touches one could hope for to recreate an era many of us remember so fondly. And though your first go might not result in the most satisfying conclusion, there's a good amount of replayability and the achievements list can give you a good sense of the variety of possible outcomes depending on your choices. If you have any nostalgia at all for the internet of the early 2000s or just want to experience a charming story of adolescent love interests and internet forum drama, you should definitely give Videoverse a go. Thanks so much for watching, and if you like what you see, please remember to like, subscribe, and consider heading to patreon.com slash games where you can get lots of great perks and continue to support clickbait-free independent content.